Yeah, it's a day for the ducks today. They're smart, we're not. Hey, good morning and welcome back to the channel. Danny and I are out on a beautiful, windy, rainy day. And uh, I just asked him why he was out today. Probably the same reason I am. I haven't been out in a couple weeks and sometimes you get the urge. So I went out last week and then once you go out, you get the urge to go again. So that's why we're here. We're, we're originally going to a, a different lake by Orlando, but the water's too high and the ramp is closed. So we're at Claremont Chain of Lakes and we're gonna uh, do some touring and we're gonna do some anchoring with my new system and see if it works out as advertised. A very good friend uh, got it for me as a gift and I appreciate that. You know who you are and we'll just see if it works. So uh, I don't know if it's gonna rain. Do you think it's gonna rain? Looks like it could. It was sprinkling a couple months ago. Sprinkling go. He's got his uh, emergency uh, rain jacket on. I have Neoprene on. So I'm just uh, consigned to get wet <laughs> and go from there. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks for coming along today. I got my uh, anchor bag right here. You know, if you know you're going to anchor somewhere, you can tie the anchor bag right to the outside of your ski so you don't have any trouble getting to it. Well, the first order of the day is to go find a smaller lake where we're a little bit sheltered. I take off in the front, I'm going along, and within about 20 seconds, I didn't see him, but Danny turned and did a U-turn. I kept going across the lake. I was about a minute or two down the road. Couldn't see him in my mirrors, so I said, where'd he go? I did that U-turn and he was still on the other side of the lake. We crossed, I caught up with him, and I said, what the heck? Do not tell me you lost your hat again. Oh, I got it. I just did it come off your head? Oh my God. Yeah, so it's up front right now, but. <laughs> I looked back and I said, well, where is he? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I had to pass it four times, I'm surprised I was able to still get it. Oh, you got it? You had to go buy it four times? Yeah. Okay, so this is a no wake zone because the water level is so high in the lake. This young lady is a popular attraction. Looks like the bottom's pretty flat here, free of any obstructions. Pick a place like that to test out the anchor. You know, if we could jump out of the video for just a minute, it might be useful to see the, the three major parts that I'm talking about in this anchor bag that John, the anchor man in New Zealand, has constructed. This is just some anchor line that I've added to the kit. And this is the bow strap. Simply loop it through the front hook through itself. And you could actually leave this on the ski permanently and then when you're anchoring onshore or offshore, um, just you're going to clip it to this end right here. And this is the bungee cord that fits over the Yamaha or Sea-Doo mirror uh, to hold it in place. So that's the bow strap. Here's the anchor rig itself with the Cooper anchor. I already had the Cooper anchor, but the rig itself is extremely well made. It comes with about a three foot, four foot chain on it with uh, some coating material so it doesn't scratch your uh, wave runner and has a clip on the end so you could clip it right to your bow strap. So those are the three pieces that come in this kit uh, which we're going to show you in this video. So I have my Cooper anchor here. We're in about 10 feet of water. So 
So what I have here is a bow line attached to the bow and I can pull it up, grab it from the seat here and I'm going to hook the anchor line to it with a locking carabiner. So now the anchor line is attached to the boat, not going anywhere. The wind's coming from this direction. Just gotta make sure you're hanging on to one part of the anchor line. Now I'm drifting into these weeds. So I can feel the anchor is set out there. The boat rotated around, so I'm facing the wind, and it stopped me from going into these weeds just in time. You buy that, Danny? Yep. Because I'm not drifting anymore, right? No, not at all. I am. You're not. You are. <laughs> Hanging on to the line that's still attached to the boat, casually. I'm gonna pull up the anchor, and you'll see it's attached to the bow line, and you actually see me pulling to the anchor. Because that anchor is set pretty tight. Hopefully I don't run into Danny. I'm good. I think we're just going to miss. And then as you get over the anchor. You can continue to pull it up. It was probably set in muck. Or sand. I got a chain here attached to it. And there. Is your Cooper anchor up off and it looks like it was uh, stuck in mud and some weeds. I'll come by you. Mine does that every once in a while. Hold it down. Didn't you say once? and I thought it also might be useful to show you on land how this looks. So this is your bow line attached to your front hook. It's got a little uh, bungee cord that goes over the mirror. So when you're on the water you stand up. It's even got a little thing you put your finger through. You pull that back over your mirror not letting go of it. And then what I did is I made a blight in the rope of about 10 feet up from the anchor and I'm clipped in. So once I clip the, the, the blight on the anchor line, one section of the anchor line is loosely attached to the ski. You just need that so you can pull the anchor up. And then you simply throw out your anchor. So we'll simulate throwing it out. The anchor will sit, and you have scope, you have a chain on it. This will actually then move forward, like that, out to the anchor. And you're anchored. To pull it up, Reverse the process. 
tug, you tug, you tug. You get to the bow line. At that point, you could unclip it if you want. And to fix that, don't let go of the anchor line. It's attached to your ski though. And then you simply pull the anchor up. This anchor comes with an anchor bag and he's designed it so well and so smartly. It's got mesh on the bottom and the top so water will drain right out of it after you put the anchor in there it's all wet. And it'll fit the Cooper anchor in there. And then this bow line just rides on your ski, doesn't cause any problems. We just went 45 miles an hour with it. As an option, uh, slight improvement to the whole system that he wants to talk about. So what I was actually talking about was it doesn't have to be something like this. It can just be a regular piece of rope or whatever. Mm -hmm. But whatever the length would be to make this fully extended from here to the cleat to fully extended. So so yeah, if you were here, let's do this. Yep. You'd hook into here. All right. And this would just be an extra catch. If you're if you're hooked into here, and then this is hooked in to your uh, cleat. Uh huh. If you were, if you were to accidentally grab this and you weren't hooked into anything yet, yeah. And you go like this, and it gets away from you. Yeah. Now it's in the water. You're swimming for it. Yeah. So if you have that short piece of rope on there that's attached here you could pull this back i see i think that is i think that is a good idea okay and then once you hook your anchor into here you do the same thing you can keep the extra tied up here if you want yeah but if for some reason you don't have enough or you accidentally throw it in the water um it all goes into the water and once again you want to retrieve your anchor it's the same thing you're pulling this up it's just keeping an extra an extra length of something to get to this in case that falls in or you lose this as you're trying to do it um, and then it goes the same way with what you did throw the anchor out it'll pull it it'll pull it I don't want to do that I don't that's all right you're good you're good um, but like I said long enough piece of rope it's gonna give you full full pull on this and you can still get to it and pull it back yeah and then if you, you need to pull it back up if this wasn't here you just pull this straight up and Right yeah, I think that is a. I now I understand what you're saying. It took me a while to to grasp it, but yeah. uh, it's another safety yep. uh, feature. So especially like if you're out in the ocean or something, and 20 feet of water, and the waves are banging you around, and you make a a bonehead move and drop the anchor line. Um, you see cold sharks swimming. Around. And you see sharks swimming around. <laughs> uh, that's a fail-safe way to get off ski. So I get it. All right, good. <laughs> uh, Danny, we came out and uh, went to a closed boat ramp. I first should apologize to you for that. I did not think that that lake uh, would still have high water after Hurricane Nicole, but it did. Yeah, it was up there pretty good. And it looked interesting enough that we'll go back and do it some other time. So we detoured over to Claremont Lakes about nine minutes away and um, wanted to show you how the anchoring rig that uh, a friend recently uh, sent me uh, is used and we did pretty well on that and then both on the water and then we just showed you on the land how it works and now we're gonna head back uh, it's gonna be raining here in a little bit it rained a little bit out there huh? yeah a little bit I ended up taking my glasses off I couldn't see anything <laughs> and how about your hat did you yeah get your hat? I go well that blew off with the first 15 seconds <laughs> my my uh <laughs> The collar on my jacket was whacking up against my neck so I was trying to mess with that and I lifted my head a little too much and it just went but um I thought it was gone I had to do four passes on it and I finally <laughs> found the damn thing all right so on behalf of uh, Danny and I and uh, Tracy and Sarah who are not here that should be noted they are not here uh, Danny and I were the only two brave ones with the time to uh, come out today so Everybody have a great day. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking the channel. We'll see you on the next adventure. Take care. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Bye.